The only channel is right down there, and the wind gets blocked by the cliff. Will there be any competition today? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm going to try to go out down there on the other side of the rocks over here at the lane. Great. Good luck. Test it out. Might be good. All right. Crazy! Yay! The slalom was completely reaches when we sail off the wind, and you can use a really small board in that and big sails. And there's not a whole lot of tactics involved. Whoever can make their board go faster wins. You know, if a gorilla could windsurf really well and aim at an orange mark, then it would do fairly well in the slalom. Winning over Florida's Greg Aguera, Robbie Nash is the quickest to every orange mark and is unbeatable in the dual surf slalom event. Now we travel up the coast to Hukipa Beach Park for the premier event that everybody's been waiting for, the wave surfing and jumping. Francis Baron de Rone, probably the world's famous windsurfer from cross country and distance records. Uh, Baron, what are the basic tricks and the maneuvers these guys are going to be doing out here? Just not get caught by a big wave, to be able to jive very fast, to be very maneuverable in these waves. And you'll see the best guys immediately stand up among the others. Well, the way the scoring set up, it's on a 20-point system, and they have five points for jumping, five points for style, which is your overall routine, and uh, 10 points for surfing, the actual riding of the wave. To win that event, more or less, the judges are going to be looking for the guy who's doing the most surfing and the most turning and stuff on waves, the guy who catches the most waves, does the most radical maneuvers. This is the, one of the first times this event has ever tried to be pulled off in Hawaii, as far as I know. And it's of great importance that you've read your know, wave surfing and jumping sailing instructions so that you understand the parameters of this event. The competitors today, are they the best in the world that we have here? Oh, absolutely. There will be four competitors on the water, and that's it. The first two will be Ishiwata versus Rhonda Smith, and Renee Bauman versus Richard White. Japan, Asunimoto Ishiwata gets a nice ride and maneuvers off the curl of the wave. Rhonda Smith, top woman contender with eight world titles, has a shot at the finals. Other competitors sail out through the surf for their heats. Meanwhile, Team O'Neill's Rhonda Smith has gone down hard. It looks like she's in trouble. Richard White with a bottom turn, hurls, and swallows a little water. Rhonda Smith comes ashore after cutting her head on her board. 48 stitches puts her out of the competition. 
Mike Walls flies out to the surf for his preliminary heat to exhibit his wave riding skills. Without a doubt, the wave surfing and jumping is the most sensational event. Windsurfers have added a whole new dimension to the term wipeout, especially in this strong surf. In spite of a broken mast, Robbie Nash qualifies for the finals. Julie DeWord surprises everyone, including herself, and wins her preliminary heats. With the yellow sail, Team O'Neill's Ken Winter has advanced into the finals. The O'Neill wetsuit vest protects the board sailors from wind chill, something they fear, even in the tropical waters of Hukipa's treacherous reefs and rocky shoreline. Now for the finals of the wave surfing and jumping. I'd like to uh, again offer my congratulations to our 16 finalists. The finalists did a super job staying in the competition. You're the only woman in the finals of the competition of the wave surfing and jumping. What's your strategy? If the winds are too high and the waves are too big, I don't dare go in the water, not here on Maui. It's too treacherous. There's the there's a lot of men that won't go out. I've heard a lot of the guys say they won't even go into the water in their heat because of the condi conditions as they were yesterday. Um, if they're good, I'll go and just go for it. Julie DeWord goes into the finals. The 23-year-old woman from Honolulu with just 12 months of windsurfing experience gives it her best shot, but is eliminated in her first two heats. Hawaiian-born Fred Haywood, with 22 years of surfing experience and just two years of windsurfing experience, is the sport's oldest living big wave windsurfer, 32 years old. A resident of Maui's Lahaina, getting a nice long ride. Spectators watch the action as Haywood gets some good air, but he's eventually defeated by Matt Schweitzer and Klaus Zimmer in the double elimination finals. O'Neill's Ken Winner from Annapolis, Maryland, is upset and out of the competition after three rounds. The sail with the M stands for Mistral, one of the world's leading manufacturers of sailboards. After winning the course racing and the surf slalom, Robbie Nash of Kailua, Oahu, seems unbeatable. He goes one-on-one -on -one with the up-and-coming aggressive style of Pete Cabrina. surfers train and sail in the warm trade winds that blow off famous Diamond Head. Nash defeats Cabrina, now takes on Richard White. Richard picks up speed, gets into a good wave, and works it to the max. White has upset Robbie Nash. Nash is out of the finals. Richard White's victory over Robbie Nash is cut short as Klaus Zimmer flies into action to knock White out of the competition. The semifinal round saw Matt Schweitzer, a three-time world champion, defeating Klaus Zimmer. Klaus was consistent and conservative, ending up placing third. The raging surf off Maui's Hukipa Beach sets the stage for the dynamic final matchup. Matt Schweitzer against the tenacious Mike Waltz, who's gone undefeated in every heat so far. Team O'Neill's Schweitzer leads Waltz out through the surf. Matt's sail is the rainbow with red on the bottom panel. Mike's lower rainbow is blue. Schweitzer does a quick jive, hoping to catch a good wave. Matt does a couple of turns, then does a great job and heads back out through the lane. Waltz on a wave, surfing in front of the critical part of the curl. Waltz again going for it. This looks to be a real powerful wave. Schweitzer slips out of his foot strap, but stays with it. Mike Waltz with a great high-flying jump. Schweitzer has the sail reversed. Manages to catch the wave.
then brings the sail around and drops to the bottom for a very smooth turn. Matt on the inside working the whitewater for points. Walt's on a fast wave. His mass is 15 feet in height, so judge for yourself the size of the surf. He really looks good, very aggressive. Fantastic bottom turns and cutbacks. A Grand Prix winning wave. Mike Waltz comes out of the water after winning the world's first ever freestyle wave surfing and jumping event, while Robbie Nash wins the Maui Windsurfing Grand Prix overall championship. You won the wave surfing and jumping event. What does it feel like? It feels great. <laughs> what happened out there? What was the difference between you and your longtime friend, Matt Schweitzer? Um, I really don't know. I guess it was up to the judges. I was kind of, we were, I ended up over here at the left and he was at the right, so we couldn't really see each other. And I think we both had the same thing on our mind, was to catch as many waves as possible and stay as maneuverable as we can. What were you doing on those waves? Uh, just trying to do as many turns as I could and impress the judges and trying not to fall. We call it Hall of Fame Day. Me and Fred and the boys. Every once in a while you get a day that's just right on. And for that day, the additions were pretty much perfect for the time I was out. Because the wind wasn't very strong. It was maybe 18 knots. And the waves were a good 8 feet, maybe some 10 foot sets. Will there be any competition today? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm going to try to go out down there on the other side of the rocks over here at the lane. Great, good luck. Test it out. It might be good. All right. Crazy! Yay! The slalom was completely reaches when we sail off the wind, and you can use a really small board in that and big sails, and there's nothing. 